Sometimes you run across a, a term, perhaps an analytical term, that you've not seen before, and it's just so striking. And I've had, I've had this happen more and more lately. And one of these is revenge effect. I'm going to read this, maybe comment a little as I go, but um, I really like this idea, and it's, it's apt. Anatomy of Revenge. A revenge effect is not the same thing as a side effect. If a cancer chemotherapy treatment causes baldness, that is not a revenge effect. But if it induces another equally lethal, lethal cancer, that is a revenge effect. If an experimental hair growing drug were shown to raise the likelihood of cancer, it would be banned. But its risk would be a side effect rather than a revenge effect. On the other hand, if it turned out to accelerate hair loss under certain conditions, that would be a revenge effect. A revenge effect also is not just a trade-off. If legally required safety features raise airline fares, that's a trade-off. But suppose, say, requiring separate seats with child restraints for infants and charging a child's fare for them would lead many families to drive rather than fly, more children could in principle die from transportation accidents than if the airlines had continued to permit parents to hold babies on their laps. This outcome would be a revenge effect. This is pretty complex for me, maybe <laughs> not for you, and, but it's pretty clearly written. And the idea of a revenge effect is that technology uh, is not an unalloyed good. That there are always baked into the DNA of any particular technology a um, unforeseen consequences, shall we put it. Um, for example, the revenge effect of creating the internet is Facebook. So the other paragraph here I'd like to read. Security is another window on revenge effects. Power door locks, now standard on most cars, increase the sense of safety, but they have helped triple or quadruple, quadruple the number of drivers locked out over the last two decades, costing 400 million a year and exposing stranded drivers to the very criminals the locks were supposed to defeat. Advanced alarm systems also are now standard equipment on many luxury cars and popular options on even more moderately priced models. It is true that most owners don't mind occasional incidents. They'd rather have false positives than false negatives. But squirrel exploration and other transient events spook the system so easily that the rest of us assume sirens to be a screaming wolf. In cities where alarms appear are most needed, hot-headed neighbors silence malfunctioning systems by trashing cars. Then the damages are a revenge effect. If legislatures, manufacturers, and insurance companies encourage installation of the alarms and frust frustrated automobile thieves turn to armed carjacking, there's not just an individual, but a social revenge effect. At home, too, cheaper security systems are flooding police with false alarms, half of them caused by user errors. In Philadelphia, only 3,000 of 157,000 calls from automated security systems over three years were real. By diverting the full-time equivalent of 58 police officers for useless calls, the systems may have promoted crime elsewhere. Every piece of technology has a revenge effect. Just think about that for a second. Paper and pencil. Tablets. Fluorescent light bulbs. They all have a revenge effect. That's, his, that's what this author is proposing. More later, as I discover it.